Hello, welcome to episode number 386 of the Tipo Twitter by Challenge Run. This is going to be Smackdown for week 3 of July 2023, the go home show for Evolution and King of the Ring, which will be tomorrow night, will be King of the Ring, I believe, and then Sunday night will be Evolution, King of the Ring in Paris, and, um. No, other way around, King of the Ring in Rome, Evolution in Paris. But we've got the go home show tonight, um. Eight man tag team main event, Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, and Ilya Dragunov will team up with somebody to face the grand jury. And what else did I announce going into this show? A swerve will confront Pete Dunn, I remember saying that, and a whole lot more. If any more forever do though, let's jump straight into the show. We open up the show with LA Knight, yeah. Also, um new Samp Gift Pack came out. Um JW has a new company logo now. Um, just roll with it, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it takes some getting used to, because I looked at this and I was like, what, what is this stable? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, LA Knight comes out, and he goes, let me talk to you. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, we are now just 24 hours away from King of the Ring in Rome. You know, the modern day Colosseum, the city where some of the greatest wars throughout history have taken place, but none will be greater than the one that's going to go down. In 24 hours time, you see four men, four superstars from the male roster, WWE roster are going to compete for their right to have their hand raised as king. First of all, you got Randy Orton, a man who quite frankly has done everything there is to do here in WWE apart from become king of the ring. And we all know he's got history with Cody Rhodes and He'd sure love to run back their little thing that they had from Backlash earlier this year in Puerto Rico. And then you got... You got Logan Paul. You see, Logan Paul seems to think he's entitled to becoming king. Well, just because he's got the biggest following here or anybody on this roster. Because he got a fan base of 12-year-old boys that eat out of the palm of his hand no matter what he's doing. That ain't enough to make you king here, buddy. Now listen up. It's going to be a little reality check when you try and become King of the Ring. If you do somehow make it past Randy Orton, you got to get to the final. That is where you're going to get put in your place. And then there's Seth freaking Rollins. Another man who's done pretty much all there is to do here in WWE main event at WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, Money in the Bank, Grand Slam champion. Last year, he came up short in the final of King of the Ring in an instant classic. And he sure got hope to run that back again this year, and this time to go one step further and win the whole damn thing. But why am I wasting time talking about these three jokesters? Because none of those people matter. Logan Paul, Randy Orton, Seth Rollins, you name them, they don't matter. Because there's only one man of the four that does matter. Only one man that's going to go to Rome, put down everybody in his path. That includes Seth Rollins and whoever from the Raw side in the final to punch his ticket to become king. And finally... Get that shot at the World Heavyweight Championship that he's been waiting for. And then the king will be crowned with everybody saying, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Out comes Seth Rollins. He's like, ha, 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 ha. Listen, 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 okay. I know you may be, I know it took you a little while to get here, you know. Busted 20 years in the business. Didn't really have anything to show for it until last year. So, you may be new to how this whole world operates, okay? But you stepped into deep waters that you can't swim in, L.A. Knight. Okay, these people, they may love you, they may love the way you say yeah, but they ain't enough to make you king, okay? And, fr- and quite frankly, as far as Logan Paul goes, he ain't got the cojones to be king either. Randy Orton, we know he's done a lot, but I need this, Okay? I lost my championship back at WrestleMania. I've not even had a shot to get it back. And this, this is my way to get there to the final. You see, Cody, in the final last year, did one over on me. So I'm going to become king, and I'm going to go to Raw, and I'm going to stomp Cody's bat face into the mat at SummerSlam and get my title back. Now, like I said, that's big words, you know, from Seth Rollins. But we'll have to see. Because to first, to get to the final of King of the Ring, you gotta go through me. And ain't nobody stopping this gravy train from leaving the station and going all the way to Tokyo at SummerSlam and becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah. 
Oh, comes Liv. And she's like, boys, you know, I know you two are, are going at it, you like king of the ring and stuff, but it's, it's, time, it's, time, it's time for the men to, to get aside. It's time for the, the ladies to have their turn because, Seth, you know, you said you've got gripes from last year that are still eating away at you and that was you losing in the final. Well, I've got gripes from last year's King Queen of the Ring tournament that have been eating away at me. Those gripes being the woman that I faced in the SmackDown semifinal, Asuka, was the very same woman I fought in the World Raw quarterfinal last year. And I came up short then. But I had to go through my own best friend to get to where I am in this tournament. And I ain't gonna let some spooky clown bitch stop me from getting my championship shot. Well, comes Asuka, and she's laughing. She's like, ah, baka baka, stupid. There's only going to be one queen because nobody's ready for Asuka. And then Liv can slap Asuka, LA Knight and Seth brawl. Big brawl between King and Queen of the Ring finalists to, to kick off the show. Yeah. <laughs> we then open up with a tag team match, and this was announced last week. It's Florence and Dakota Kai taking on Bailey and Ruby Riot. And 81 is pretty good, but I also did expect a little bit better, but that's probably because of the finish. Um, there's no winner. It goes to a double count out. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not beating any of these women ahead of Evolution. They've got two singles matches out of this to get to. But yeah, they go 40 minutes and sick, and it ends in a double count. Well, really, they're all, all four of them are fighting, but, you know, two of them are legal and they get counted out. 71 for Ruby, 77 for both Bailey and Dakota, and an 87 for Florence. And yeah, it will be at Evolution. It will be Bailey taking on Dakota Kai and Florence taking on Ruby Riot. Two grudge matches have been brewing over the last few weeks. Yeah. Should be fun times. Then after the match, they just continue fighting. <laughs> yeah. But the referees and security have to pull them apart, you know. I imagine this is pre-taped because we are in Europe. An anonymous. I just unspecified European country like some of them were in Japan not Japan sorry some of them were in France some of them were in Italy but yeah but this would have been pre-taped of course we then see a backstage segment Chaos is my guest at this time Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn like Kevin Sami you know in just 24 hours you're going to be competing for the Smackdown Tag Team Championships in Rome at King of the Ring, you know, finally a chance after all these years for you two to win tag team goal together here in WWE against two men that you know very well in Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. Kev goes, you know, I don't know what's going on over there with, with them two, but me and Sammy, we've never been closer than we are right now, you see. We've busted our ass for 20 years. And we may have had our ups and downs in that time, you know. We may have had to kill each other a couple of times, but at the end of the day, there's nobody I'd rather have by my side fighting for those tag team championships than this man right here. And Sammy goes, and tonight we're going to get a little tester because I'm going to beat Daniel Bryan in the ring 1-2-3 tonight. And then at King of the Ring, me and Kevin are going to finally become tag team champions. They'll be just here. <laughs> me and Mark Seth Rollins. He's like, boys, you know, it's going to be a big night for both of us at King of the Ring tomorrow night. You see, I'm, you're looking at the next king of the ring. And while I may be after Cody, you know, I still gotta leave my mark on my show here, SmackDown. And that brings me to you two. It's like, I'm sure you're all aware that last week, Solo and Jacob Fatu were left laying in, in my locker room. And Kev's like, yeah, yeah, we saw. And Seth's like, oh, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you know exactly who did it. And Sammy's like, no, actually, we don't. And Seth's like, oh, come on. You guys thinking that you're going to be one step ahead because you can get to the top of the tag team division you took out your biggest threat. Okay, you don't need to hide it from me. I know it's you two. And Kev's like, no, we didn't attack Solo and Jacob Fatu. We're like, listen, we've got a match. Well, Sammy's got a match tonight. I haven't got a match tonight, but we've got business to attend to. So if you want to come out here hurling accusations at me, Quite frankly, young, I'm not going to sit back and take that. So, how about next week, me and you one on one here on SmackDown? And Seth goes, "Oh, Kev, what's the matter? Getting a little defensive for somebody who didn't attack my two Samoan beasts, huh? You're wrong, Kev. And 
just so happens, if you two happen to be the tag team champions next week, and Seth freaking Rollins here puts you down, then I guess we know who's next to getting a shot for those titles. <laughs> then he swerve and hit Row in the ring. That's why I was like, no, yo, yo, cut the music, cut the music. Listen here, I'm going to keep this short and I'm going to keep this sweet. Pete Dunne, get your ass out here. What's, what's the matter? What's like, no, you don't you speak. Don't you speak. This is my time, my microphone, my ring, my championship. You see, I won that championship from the most dominant United States champion in history. Okay? And for you to sit back and take that championship and think it's yours it makes me sick. You're a temporary possessor of that championship, Dunne. So here's my official challenge next week. Me and you one-on-one -on -one once again for that United States Championship. And I'm going to take my title back and sit back atop my throne in my house. And Pete goes, listen here, mate. You know what? I'll beat all your friends up before. And I'll beat you up in London. And as you've already seen, I've already beat up Karrion Cross last week. So you know I'm down for a fight. So, if it's a title match you want next week, I accept, on one condition. Your little mates here, Top Dollar, Adonis, B-Fab, we leave them in the back, and we do this man-to-man. -man. That's what I was like, fine, I don't need Hit Row anyway, I'm Swerve Goddamn Scott. So yeah, championship match set next week, United States title on the line, Pete Dunne defends. Against Swerve Scott. One on one, no hit row interference, I guess. The Revolution. Then Carb, quick promo. And they go, yeah, yeah, now you remember who we are, huh? Okay, so. The Revolution has been way too quiet for way too long. And just because you don't see us out there in the ring tonight doesn't mean that we've forgotten. Okay, as far as we're aware, our plan is currently in motion, okay? This gripe that we've been holding for months now, it's coming to fruition. It's playing out in front of our very eyes. So we're just going to take a chill, you know, sit back, you know, stars like me don't, don't have to be here every week entertaining the fans of Portland, Oregon. So I'm a chillax and watch how things unfold because... The revolution is in effect, and the revolution will be televised. You just don't see it yet. 84 rated match. Um, Keith Lee gets a quick win over Cedric Alexander. I say quick, 11.37, it's actually good. Um, yeah, ahead of him and a mystery partner against the Steiners. At King of the Ring. Yeah. Keith Lee gets an 81. Cedric Alexander gets a 69. Just a reminder that Keith Lee can cook. You know, yeah, 84 is good. Whatever. We then see Kayla backstage, her guest, Malcolm Bivens and Omas. And she's like, Bill Bivens, you know, things have been going on between you and the French connection. And Bivens like, I don't want to talk about French people, Kayla. I want to talk about the Nigerian giant, Omas. Okay, and how he squished that French lebug, David Martin. And how, at Evolution, VLA is going to go one of my, my close personal friend, Indy Hartwell. And Indy's going to put VLA down. And then Indy walks into frame. She's like, stop. And he's like, what? what? What's the problem? She's like, we're not friends. You know? I'm just sick of VLA and, and the Frenchmen. But I'm not your friend, okay? I just want to get back at her for what they've been doing to Sango, who you've been manipulating. And then it was manipulating. Who's manipulating anybody around here, Indy? Huh? It's not me. Okay. The Nigerian giant Omas, he's not manipulated. Okay, so maybe, maybe being up the right way up instead of upside down, you know, the land down under and all that, maybe that's getting into your brain, because I don't see any manipulation around here. I just see you wanting to beat Fiole Mata in our home country, because of what she did to Sanga, who's your friend, Indy. I've got your friend's best interests at heart, okay? So... Once you deal with this mutual pest we have, then we will we'll discuss Sangha, we'll discuss this relationship here. And he's like, Devi's no relationship here. As soon as evolution's over, 
you give me my friend back. And she storms off. Bivens like, women, huh, Kayla? It's like, stop right there, stop right there. Kayla, don't you move, you two. Get out of my, get out of my shot. Okay. Now, I may be, you know, in over my head. Okay, I think I'm a sane human being, Kayla. Okay, you can agree. But this whole thing with Susanna and uh, the Uncle Howdy and the puppets and that loser Bray Wyatt, who I've beaten twice, by the way. Where's the lie? Um, they're getting all up in my grill, okay? But people don't want to believe that I've beaten Bray Wyatt. I've done it not once but twice, okay? And I'm gonna make it a trifecta. Okay, Kayla? So this is my official challenge to Bray Wyatt for a match at King of the Ring. Unless you're too scared to show up and get embarrassed by the best wrestler here on this roster, the best wrestler on the planet. The veteran Mr. Bobby Fish. Because he's better than you, Bray Wyatt. As the shirt says, I beat you twice. Where's the lie? <laughs> so yeah, Bray Wyatt... In matches I didn't think I'd be booking on pay-per-view after WrestleMania. Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Bobby Fish. One-on-one -on -one at King of the Ring. If Bray shows up, that is. <laughs> Speaking of King of the Ring... Well, not really King of the Ring, it's evolution related. But it's Tiffany. Her and Mariah May are already in Paddy. She goes, You didn't think that someone like me, a superstar girl like me, a glamour icon like me, would wait till Sunday to get the heads up, the scoops in Paddy of all places? No, this place is made for me, okay? Little me in Paddy, okay? So, I've been looking at the landscape, okay? Ready for the tiffiest night of the year at Evolution. Because this is this is my home turf, even though I've never been here before, Mariah, you know, but I fit right in like a glove. Okay, I see all these people looking around staring at me because I'm just the center of attention, the center of the universe everywhere I go. So you're not going to want to miss me. At Evolution, in two days' time, because I'm going to be on the show and I'm going to make it memorable and must-see, okay? You thought... The Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe, those were the big attractions here in Paris, but you can add a new landmark to that list. Me! Toodles. <laughs> 80 rated match. Um, why did this one go so much better than EO and Chelsea? Candace against Chelsea Green. From last week, you know, Candace beat the fuck out of Chelsea Green with a kendo stick. So we had to do the match, and yeah, Candice wins an 8.32 with a Lion Salt. She gets an 87 and a 54 for Chelsea Green. Then after the match, Candice takes the mic and she goes, You know what I'm so sick of? I'm so sick of people walking around here. I've been champion since WrestleMania, okay? I've been on top of my game. This has been the best year of my career since January when I won the Royal Rumble to now. Yet people are still overlooking me, okay? Everybody's learned that at your own risk... Overlook me, okay? I was never supposed to be here. It could end at any moment. So I'm doing whatever I can to stay on top. And EO thinks that because, you know, we had a couple of matches a couple of years ago where she bought the better of me, that it's a shoe in that I'm going to lose my championship this Sunday at Evolution. Well, <laughs> honey, you may not know about me, okay? Because this is, this isn't the same Candice LeRae that you fought back in NXT, Okay. This isn't the same woman that you attacked, you blindsided, when, I don't know, something went clicked in your brain, you decided to become this evil force that you've become. Okay? Because if you want to go that route, I've shown. Just ask Chelsea. I can play dirty too. Okay? And if you think that gives you the heads up, and the one up, to win again because you oh lord knows Candice LeRae can't beat Eo Sky. Well guess what hun? Streaks and records they exist for one reason and for one reason only and that's to be broken. This Kendo Sticks exists for one reason and one reason only and that's to be broken. A lot of things will be broken at evolution, but one of the things that will not be broken is my spirit, and my heart, and my determination, and my will to keep a hold 
of my women's world championship. So, Io, see ya in Paris. Then see the grand jury, the full grand jury, well, not, no, um, Ziggler, Emerson, and Ken backstage. And he goes, right, okay, so I know that Mello and Trick, you know, they got a team of Ilya, and those guys haven't really been seen out of Y recently ahead of, you know, King of the Ring, but we're on the same page here, okay? We're, we're a group, okay? The grand jury. And even though me and DP are going to be kicking each other's asses tomorrow night, okay, tonight is going to get the job done in this eight man tag team main event. And then Emerson's like, wait, where is DP? And then he walks in. He goes, sorry, I'm late, guys. And him and Dolph sort of look at each other intensely. And Dolph's like, where have you been? He goes, you know, I've just got the call. I got it tonight for this eight-man tag team match. And for our match tomorrow night at King of the Ring. And Dolph goes, so yeah, about that match at King of the Ring. I was just thinking that. And then Pri sort of cuts him off and he goes, Dolph, you know, we're, we're brothers, you know, we're family. Okay, and we're going to prove that in tonight's main event when we beat Trick, Mello, Ilya, and whoever their final fourth tag team partner is. But tomorrow night, there's a world championship on the line between us. And if the match comes down to us two, I'm tearing your head off, putting you down, and taking that championship. And I won't feel any remorse doing so. And off goes, oh yeah? Well, if it comes down to the two of us... I'm going to kick your head off and take that World Heavyweight Championship because I needed that championship for the last 15 years, DP. You feel me? And Priest goes, yeah. Yeah, I feel you. 79-rate tag team match. Um, Garza and Loomis. Um, Andrew Garza does pick up the win. He beats Dex Loomis with a wing clipper in 10-46. 76 for Angel Garza, 52 for Dexter Loomis. And, yeah. But, <laughs> I imagine the, the match ends. Garza celebrating his win, but Loomis would do, like, the sit-up. Actually, no. No, he wouldn't do the sit-up, because that's just too Undertaker. What he would do is, um, Garza would be celebrating his win. And, like, Loomis would be, Loomis would be laid out. And then the camera would sort of, like, be positioned, where, like, we, we just so Garza and the MILFs, I guess. And like slowly move away from one place and then just focus on Garza's place for a couple of seconds. And then when it comes back around, Loomis is already just on his feet, just staring at him with those big Dexter Loomis eyes. And Garza, he like gets startled by Dexter and like scurries away. And then Dexter's like, but honey, you beat him, okay? What's that to be scared about? We then see a pre-tape. It's like, it starts at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and then it slowly pans down all the way to the bottom, and there's Via Lee, like, looking up at it. And she goes, I never thought in a million years this would be possible. Or, she's speaking in French, but the subtitles are in English. She's like, I never thought that a WWE premium live event in Paris, featuring moi, Via Lee Marteau, this is, no doubt about it, the biggest match of my career. And my family is going to be there on Sunday night to watch me. And she turns to the camera and she's like, Indy Hartwell, you may have issues with me and friendship issues going on between you and Sangha and Malcolm Bivens, but that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is what's, what's the moment that's going to be made at Evolution. When I, in front of my people, get the chance to make history as the first French-born female WWE superstar to compete in Paris at a WWE premium live event. Au revoir. They get a quick backstage segment. Florence, after the opening contest, is going back to the locker room and Lyra and Killer Kelly walk in. They're like, you know, what, what's going on, you know? She's like, is this Ruby, you know? Ruby Riot, you know, she's been a thorn in a lot of people's sides for ages, but now I've finally got to realise and shut her up. I'm going to get a chance to shut her up this Sunday at Evolution, but hey, that's enough about me. All about you two, you know? You've, you've been sort of, like, together, but not, okay? Because Lyra's in Queen of the Ring, and Lyra, you know... 
tough luck against Asuka, but you know, Asuka's Asuka, that's tough, and maybe next year you're both going to be on the run of your lives and King of the Queen of the Ring. A lot of goes. You know, Asuka did take me to my limits, and I wish I could have won, but I was thankful just to get the opportunity. And at Evolution, you're going to get your opportunity. You're going to put Ruby down. And who knows? With that thing in your hands, may make a little more history. And then Lyra and Kelly walk off, and Florence is like, huh. Sixty-three, honestly, fucking fine for whatever for what this is. Only Albafire did any good. <laughs> yeah, um, Albafire and Iona Webb beat the tag team of Monica Hollins and Erica Yan, two NXT women. Um, Alba pins Erica with a gory bomb. Thirty-four for Erica, fifty-six for Monica Hollins, forty-four for Iona Webb, and a seventy-eight for Albafire. And yeah, should they they celebrate their win to the witches when we hear like a whistle from the Titan Tron. Let me look up, and there's Chase you. In the gym, or like the, the the school, like gym hall, and they're getting all prepared, and Thea and Haley getting all fired up, and Andre Chase goes, Alba, and I own a web. You've been looking and stealing Andre Chase University for too damn long. You think you can take over this place, huh? This place is built on the heart and the desire of all the students here at Chase U. So we're going to scare you off. We're going to fight you off for good next week. My two girls here. My two star pupils. Thea and Haley. I guess you two spooky witches. Spooky motherfuckers. In an Andre Chase University rules. Street fight. Chase you. Chase you. Chase you. Yes. Huge announcement. Chase you rules. Which is basically. It's a street fight. But there's going to be a bunch of like school stuff there'll be a whiteboard and <laughs> books and shit and stuff like that around ringside yeah should be a fucking doozy here's a segment Liv enters her locker room and she is in there she's like Liv you know I, I know that you want to win Queen of the Ring and you're going to get Asker again but come on you know to, 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 to think about this. Rushing in recklessly against somebody like Asuka is not a decision that could really benefit you. And she's like, don't you believe in me, Sheeta? Like, last week, me and Drew were in the main event, and I won, okay? If you wanted to tell yourself what to do if you were facing Asuka in the semifinal, you could have won last week, but you didn't, because I beat you. And I'm going to beat Asuka on, su on Sunday night. And I'm going to become Queen Liv. And... I'm going to get a champi championship to my name finally, once and for all. And if Asuka... And she is like, well, if if I was the one facing Asuka, I'm just saying that I would. And Liv's like, but you're not. Okay? You're not the one facing Asuka, Sheeta. I am. And then we hear cla sarcastic clapping coming out from off screen in walks Mr. Paul Heyman. And he goes, very well said, Olivia. Miss Sheeta, my name is Paul Heyman, as you may know, and I've been doing a little bit of business in recent weeks. And I see you two, two fine young women who I could easily see becoming women's champion in the future. And I see you live, and you, you're, you're going out there and you're defying the Empress of Tamarawaska. You're defying one of the most dangerous women we've ever seen step foot into a WWE ring. And I like that about you. I like that fire, that determination. You see, Liv, you're far from the biggest, biggest dog in the fight. You're far from the strongest dog in the fight. But you've got that fire that I like in my WWE superstar. So I'm just coming down here, Liv Morgan and Miss Sheeta, with a proposition for the two of you. But I'm going to need you to do something for me first. And Liv's like, what's that? And Heyman's like, if you want to beat Asuka in Queen of the Ring, you need not to hold back. You need to throw yourself at Asuka. You need to go, dare I say, 
extreme. And he walks off. And Liv and Sheeta sort of look at him on confused. Or Liv's sort of like thinking about what you said. But Sheeta's just there shaking her head like, nah, fuck this fat guy. <laughs> we then head to Gorilla. Daniel Bryan's there. He's getting ready for his match with Sami Zayn. And Kale's like, you know, Bryan, you and Sami Zayn one on one can't get next on SmackDown. Now, what are your thoughts hanging in this match? And Bryan goes, what are my thoughts, Kayla? Well, I can't think straight. Okay, we got to defend our SmackDown Tag Team Championships tomorrow night in Rome at King of the Ring. But my partner is... He's not here. He's too busy having secret deals with Paul Heyman to return my phone calls. It's fine. Because he's going to be in my corner in Rome. And because he's Cesaro, he's one of the best damn wrestlers in the history of this business. We're, we're going to be alright, Kayla. Though I can't say the same for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Then Brian's music hits, and now he goes for the main of, well, not the main event, um, the next match, which is Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Gets a 94, and Daniel Bryan loses to Sami Zayn clean. You know, because, well, I say clean, but he sort of is, he's, he's not all there. Cesaro is not by his side, he's still, still thinking about all that shit. And Sami has got Kev hyping him up in his corner. And at the end, Sammy just halluva kicks him and pins him. If that happens tomorrow night, we'll have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. 91 for Brian, 79 for Sammy Zayn. I will say, I have debated putting this SmackDown Tag Team Championship match on last at King of the Ring. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through with that, but by the time you're watching this video, I will have made the decision because, you know, it's, it's the next day in game. But I just thought I would just tell you now that it is a four. If it if it hasn't happened, then it was a four that crossed my mind. If it has happened, then cool, you'll see it. Next week, though, um, for once, like coming out of here, you've actually got a couple of matches announced for next week's show. Mainly because there's things that I couldn't fit on either of the pay per view cards. That being these two matches here the United States Championship match between Pete Dunn and Swerve Scott, a rematch former champion against current champion for Money in the Bank. But this time, no hit row allowed at ringside. It's going to be just mano a mano Pete Dunn against Swerve Scott for the US title on SmackDown next week. And in women's tag team action, the fate of Chase University may lie in the balance as Fia Hale and Haley Paul take on Alba Fire and Iona Webb in an Andre Chase University Rawls match. And yeah, that should sure be a hoot. And then we've got this big match, regardless of whether or not he's a SmackDown tag team champion. Kevin Owens will go one on one with Seth freaking Rollins on next week's SmackDown. That's sure to be a big one. Mello and Trick come out for the main event. Ilya's there as well. And he's like, you know, there's a lot of people that I could have could have went to tonight to be in my corner. But I think that with King of the Ring just around the corner, uh, to get the better of the grand jury, I, ca I kept my friends close. You know, Trick's here. But my enemies, my op, I kept them even closer. Out comes LA Knight. And he just storms to the ring. And he like he wants to start as the legal man in the match. And yeah, the main event will be LA Knight team of Ilya Dragunov, Trick Williams, and Carmelo Hayes against the Grand Jury. In an 82, that's pretty fine for a Trick Williams match. And yeah. You know, one of these is a team full of people who are fighting each other. The other one is a actually proper stable but it is mellow trick Ilya and Ilya Knight who pick up the win Carmelo Hayes pins Emerson Frost with nothing but net I imagine Ilya Knight hits the BFT and then uh, Mello tags himself in hits nothing but net and pins him 
Yeah. 85 for LA Knight, 87 for Ilya Dragunov, 65 for Trick Williams, 91 for Carmelo Hayes, 72 for Emerson Frost, 76 for Ken Cobain, 82 for Dolph Ziggler, and 88 for Damian Priest. So yeah, that ends the final SmackDown before King of the Ring, but not really, because we have one quick special promo from Paul Heyman. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've all seen the last month and a half here on WWE, both Raw and SmackDown. My beautiful face doing some conversing with Mr. Adam Pearson, Mr. Dave Batista. Now, I hear what the kids say these days. What's he cooking? What's Paul Heyman cooking up? Well, you're going to find out. Tomorrow night at King of the Ring. Now, who knows what Paul Heyman has been planning, but I will tell you this. I hope you enjoyed this week's Raw Smackdown. Because come next week, the WWE as you know it right now will cease to exist. Ninety eight show. Yeah, we take those. Um yeah, that's so ends the go home show. Um yeah. But basically everything was already built to on the show, so I had to like fill it out with like additional stuff. But yeah, it's fine. And we head over to Velocity, where we will have a big trios championship match. Mustafa Ali, Axiom, and RKJ will challenge Death from Above, Spistolero, Grand Malik, and Lince Dorado. We kick off Velocity with a uh, match they don't seem to click. Nathan Fraser taking on Ashanti the Adonis, 11.36. And Nathan Fraser does pick up the win, obviously. 55 for both men, and yeah, it's a chemistry thing. They don't click. But Fraser wasn't on SmackDown this week, so I thought, yeah, let's give him a run out on Velocity. Let the crowd see him. You know, fun opening match. We then get a 46, which is a match that has been penalised because they don't care about either of these men. But it is our Dante Rios match. He defeats Leslie Young of MSK in 11 minutes and 40. 58 for Dante, 57 for Leslie. And, yeah, not really much else to say about that. 60? Okay. Sensei's been carried here, but, you know, still a pretty decent match for, for a young Sensei match. And, yeah, obviously last week, coming up short, trying to challenge Ricochet, not Ricochet, scripts for the Cruiserweight Championship. But, you know, the training's not over. The training's not over for Sensei for a long, not by a long shot, because they beat, they beat Gregor Ferguson here, 653, Gomo, Gomo, no Boomerang. 39 for Sensei, 61 for Gregor. And, yeah, it's obvious that My Wrestling Academia, so we're trying to dethrone scripts. And we're actually going to hear from Scripps up next, watching Sensei's match. And he's like, huh, these, these idiots seem to still think they've got a shot at taking my championship. When I beat their Sensei last week, that should have been all they need to know about where they stand. But come next time, I won't hold back. I already have my great power. They have theirs. I do look forward to the next conflict. Sincerely, Scripts. <laughs> and then a fucking banger of a main event. Gets an 82. It's our trio championship match. Death from above is Pistolero, Lince Dorado and Grand Metal League defeat Mustafa Ali, RKJ and Axiom when Pistolero pins RKJ with a revolution fly. To make defense number four. Only four defenses of these? Okay, that seems low. 92 for Metal Leak, 83 for Lince, 91 for Pistolero, 65 for Axiom, 67 for RKJ, and a 90 for Mustafa Ali. Yeah, so and actually, 82 might be underselling that, you know, if I didn't have these two here, but who were the two I'm trying to elevate, then yeah, that match would have been even better. But yeah, that ends Velocity, that ends the build to King of the Ring and to Evolution. Um, well, Matt's more is what you thought of the show, so let me know what you thought in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for... The first of the back-to-back -back premium live event extravaganza being WWE King of the Ring, live from Rome. See you then.